Now let's look at a question. So the question says you have a cross section of a beam in which you have the eccentric load of 40 kN acting at this point which is at 5 mm from the y y axis and 10 mm from the x x axis. So this is a condition wherein the load is acting eccentrically, you know, eccentrically to both the axes. Right? The cross section area is 80 by 60. So we can straight away find out the cross section area 80 mm into 60 mm which gives you 4800 mm square. We need to find out the maximum compressive and the maximum tensile stresses produced in the body. Okay, and because it is eccentric, so you need to find out a combination of the, uh, the direct and the bending stresses. So let's find out the bending stresses first. For bending stress, I need Ixx and I need Iyy. So Ixx would be 80 into 60 cube by 12, which is 144 times 10 to the power 4 millimeter to the power 4. So similarly, I can find out I by Y, it will be 60 into 80 cube by 12, which is 256 into 10 to the power 4 by millimeter 4. So I have found out three mathematical values. One is the area Ixx and Iyy. So the bending is going to take place about Ox and about Oy. Okay, so let me give few more values. Uh, let me say, let me say this value over here, this 5 is h and 10 is k so the you know maximum bending moment when the bending is taking place about ox this is equal to p into this is p into k into x upon ixx so when bending is taking place about this particular axis that is ox right so p we know is 40 kN so this is 40 thousand k over here is 10 okay x over here is this so bending is about this like this isn't it so this would be the maximum uh, distance from the neutral axis 30 so you will have 30 as x upon i double x which is 1 double 4 into 10 to the power 4. So when you calculate this thing, you get the value as 8.33 MPa. Now you will find the maximum bending moment when the mo uh, bending stress when the bending is about Oy that is about this. Okay, so you will have, uh, you will have this value as P into H into, now the distance would be this thing. I will take this as Y upon I, Y, Y. So this is 40,000 into H which is 5 into Y which is 40 upon 256 into 10 to the power 4. So when you do that calculation, you get a value which is 3.13 megapascals. Okay. Now, let's find out the direct stress. So this is one value. This is the other value. So these are the two kind of bending stresses being produced because you have bending about two axes, about x and about y axis. Okay. Let's move forward and find out the direct value of stress which is load upon area which is 40,000 by 4800 which will be somewhere about 8.33 MPa. Now this 
is a negative stress because it is a compressive stress right so this is 8.33 megapascals okay now remember one thing in eccentric loading you have to find out the maximum compressive and the maximum tensile stress okay the maximum stress will be produced in the same quadrant as the load so you will have your maximum stress at b okay and the minimum stress will act in the opposite quadrant so you will have your minimum stress at point d now at point b you will have the compressive stress and at d you will have the tensile stress so let's get to the calculation so sigma maximum at point b it is all compressive in nature so this negative value will also be taken as positive because it's all compressive 8.33 plus 8.33 plus 3.13 this gives you 19.18 megapascal so this is the maximum compressive stress that is produced in this section and that is at point b remember this rule when you have eccentric loading case the maximum stress will always occur in the same quadrant as that of the load okay similarly sigma max at point d now because there will be tension in this uh, quadrant so you will have this as a negative stress plus 8.33 plus 3.13 so you can subtract this off you will only get 3.13 mega pascal so now you can see that whatever rule that we are stating that the maximum stress will only occur at b is true you have 19.18 mp which is the maximum value of stress produced in this section it is in the same quadrant as that of the load and you have the minimum stress in the opposite quadrant as that of the load so this is how you attempt a question on such a condition so i hope you understood the entire video and the entire chapter on the bending stresses in beams now let's move on to the next chapter and talk about the shearing stresses in beams